and this is something you really want to do every day religiously. The results come not instantly. They come from doing this regularly over time. Um, and it's, it's you're putting this, the theory is that by imposing certain rhythms on the breath with your voluntary system, gradually these are induced in the involuntary nervous system. And that comes with time. So it's the regularity of doing it that counts. It's not the intensity with which you do it or the amount of time you do it on any one day. It's the regularity of doing this over a period of weeks, months, years that produces the changes that you want. In, in yoga breathing, <laughs> you're asked if you can do this in any position. You can do it lying down. Uh, you can do it seated, you can do it standing. If you are seated, it's good to keep your feet flat on the floor and have your back straight. And in yoga breathing, you're asked to keep your tongue in the yogic position, which is touching the tip of the tongue to the ridge of tissue just above your upper front teeth. So like that. And they say that completes an energy circuit and keeps the energy of the breath within. I have no idea what that means in terms of Western physiology, but they're the ones that invented this, so we should do it the way they said. Um, by the way, it's interesting that if you look around the world at uh, places where uh, emphasis is placed on breathing, whether it's in athletics, natural childbirth, martial arts, systems of meditation, um, and try to figure out where this knowledge came from, all trails point to ancient India. You know, this is some, it, this is an experiential science that developed thousands of years ago in India and has diffused all over the world. Um, so just in, an interesting phenomenon. And in India, very little of this has been written down. It's mostly passed on as an, as an oral tradition. And it's astonishing to me how little research has been done on this. A little in India, almost none outside of India. Um, I constantly tell people interested in medical research, this would be such a rich area to investigate. Um, and I think it's so easy to document the, the physio physiological changes that happen. All right, so in this exercise, you're going to inhale through your nose quietly and exhale through your mouth, making a noise like <sighs> You're going to be exhaling around your tongue, which may feel awkward at first. It's easier if you purse your lips outward. <sighs> So you're blowing air out around your tongue, and if you press your tongue up, don't worry about that, you'll figure it out. Okay, so uh, the, this exercise begins, you let all the air out through your mouth, close your mouth, inhale quietly through your nose to a count of four, hold your breath for a count of seven, and then exhale for your mouth, through your mouth for a count of eight. And you're gonna repeat this for four breath cycles. And that's it. Um, the the, the uh, speed with which you do it is not important. What's important is keeping that ratio of four in, hold seven, out eight. So exhalation is longest. And uh, when we do it together, I'll count at a rate that, that I think will be comfortable for all of you. So just watch me do it uh, first, and then, uh, then we'll, do, we'll do it together and I'll count for you. It looks like this. Let me stand up. That's all. Uh, it's hard for me to come back and talk after I do that because this produces a very pleasant altered state of consciousness that I would rather stay in. Um, that may not happen the first time you do it, but with practice it will, and it's one of the rewards of doing this. Um, okay, so let's try this together. Um, all right, so begin by letting all the air through your mouth. Close your mouth in through your nose, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, close in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, close in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, 
six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now just breathe normally. Uh, don't try to influence your breath, just observe, watch it and notice any changes that you feel. Some of you may feel a little lightheaded doing this for the first time. That will tend to pass with practice. Uh, you may notice a feeling of relaxation. I promise you that will become very intense over time as you practice this. You must do this twice a day. Uh, that's the minimum practice, is four breath cycles twice a day. You can do it more often but never more than four breaths at one time. And you must do it at least twice a day. I do it in the morning when I wake up before I do some sitting meditation. I do it in the evening when I get in bed to fall asleep. Uh, it will help you fall asleep. If you wake up in the middle of the night for any reason and do this, it's a great way to help yourself fall back to sleep. After one month, if you're comfortable with it, increase to eight breath cycles each time. And then that's the maximum, never more than that. And then the minimum practice is eight breath cycles twice a day. Um, the real benefits of this, you'll notice after about eight weeks of doing it. You've got to do it religiously. It takes all of about a minute and a half a day, so there's no excuse for not doing this. I promise you the results that you will observe will be wonderful. If you, if you put a blood pressure cuff on somebody when they're doing this, during the phase when you hold your breath, blood pressure drops significantly, heart rate drops significantly. They typically come right back as soon as you stop. But if you do this regularly, over time, that's the trend. Um, then you can start playing with this as a tool to use in different situations. If somebody cuts you off in traffic, if somebody says something to you that pushes your button, you train yourself to do this before you react. Uh, this is a great way to deal with cravings for anything, cigarettes, chocolate. You, tra you train yourself before you act on the craving, do the breathing exercise. By the time you're done, the craving has passed. Um, the, there are all sorts of applications for this. Um, as I said, it's the single best method I've found for dealing with uh, getting back to sleep if you wake up in the middle of the night. It is the most powerful anti-anxiety measure that I've found. Uh, you cannot, if you look at people who are having anxiety, even the most severe forms of panic attack, the thing that's most striking is that breathing becomes disordered. It becomes rapid, shallow, irregular. You cannot be anxious and breathe deep, slow, quietly, and regularly. They don't go together. And this is a very powerful tool for dealing with anxiety. I have taught this to people with intractable panic disorder. And after time, in one case, a man with the worst panic disorder I'd ever seen who was dependent on Valium and you know, impossible case. It took about two years of doing the breathing exercise regularly and he got control of it and got off all medication. So it's a very powerful technique. Any questions about this?